Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, thank you all for coming, coming here to participate in this, uh, in this session. And uh, uh, I will have to start with a few apologies of my own. So, as you can see, this uh, paper was, uh, is a joint, a joint work by uh, my colleague and friend, Dr. Poncho, the director of the Archaeological Museum of History in Cuba, and myself. So, unfortunately, Dr. sends his best regards. Uh, he was not able to come here. Uh, why am I also drawing your attention to this? Because the paper is actually divided into two parts. The first, uh, my task is to introduce you to some, some well, theory and a part of practicalities pertaining to the destination management and the role of archaeologists in, in that sector. While the other, uh, the other part, uh, which is Darko's, was uh, after I slide it seamlessly into his, into his practice and, and, and comes on approach, he will introduce you to what the uh, museum director and, uh, and an archaeological museum in uh, Heritage Town and the tourist destination can do. So I'll try to fulfill feel his, feel his role in that respect. So let us start. First of all, destination management. I presume that most of us come from heritage sector, so museums, universities, and so on. So it took me some time before I started, started uh, well, paying attention and realizing, grasping what the destination management is all about and what, uh, what goes on in the mind of people from the tourism sector. So you probably are probably were, 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 well, were well aware and have experiences of your own when it comes to this collaboration between tourism and archaeology, which is not always uh, very smooth or as smooth as we would like it to be. So destination management from the perspective of the tourism sector is something we could describe as a continuous process in which tourism industry, government, regional and local administration, say public sector, and other stakeholders, for instance museums and, and heritage sector, develop a destination with a view to fulfill a shared vision of its future. Well, a definition which you may or may not like, but uh, <coughs> this is what we have to work with. So this is a result of inclusion of different sectors, groups of stakeholders and partners, such as state agencies, local communities, commercial enterprises and others, again us for instance, whose combined work results in fulfilling common goals of a destination. Think about a heritage town on the seaside or well, somewhere else. When it comes to Croatia it's mostly seaside, but yeah, things can, can be different somewhere else. Okay, so a comprehensive destination management certainly entails professional planning, implementation, revision, and evaluation of activities. So, and what is a destination? As I said, from the point of view of tourism, this is a place, this is how we define it in Croatia, okay? This is a place other than the place of permanent residence, so this is not somewhere where you live. So where tourism activities take place, or as tourist sector will say, a place of tourist consumption, so where people spend their money. Okay, so this is one a diagram that I often like to share when it comes to heritage tourism and integrated destination management. So this really entails a lot of work, a lot of people, a lot of planning, a lot of different perspectives, a lot of stakeholders. And this is where we are, archaeology. We are but a small part of it. Nevertheless, very important one, but a small part. So we are not the only ones who have, who can stake a claim in how to do and what to do about about heritage. So, when it comes to the focus of management, I would like to draw your attention to two different different parts. One is destination management. So, it's not only us, okay? So, this is tourism sector and so on. And cultural heritage man management. So, this is where we come to the fore. From my point of view and my role as a museum person, this is, this is what I have to take care about. And I would like to, to do that in, in collaboration with people responsible for destination management. But I have to stake that plan. So quality management, so this is quality management of cultural resources, ought to take into consideration the attitudes and expectations of different stakeholders. You know all about that. So for instance, some people would be responsible for guaranteeing protection and preservation of heritage sites. So there is also a need to interpret and present the property. 
as well as to create conditions for use and valorization in the economy and tourism. So this is not something that, well, most of us are really focusing on all the time. But this is where, this, this part, for instance, is where we really get into collaboration with, with tourism sector and public sector. Okay, so just oscillating between tourism and heritage. So tourist, tourism workers, tourism sector is mostly interested in creating cultural tourism product. And this is, again, one destination, oh, sorry, one definition that we work with in Croatia. So this is from the strategy of the development of cultural tourism of the Republic of Croatia. I'll just stop for a second so that you can read it. All right. Okay, so use of heritage and economy and tourism, just a few quick points. So it is, well, sometimes obvious, but on the other hand, sometimes it's not very obvious that issues pertaining to heritage management, management do not actually have to tally with the, the idea of optimizing tourism consumption. So again, the focus from tourism workers and focus from heritage people is, is often quite different, but we, we really need to work towards, towards solving it. So, however, on the other hand, the quality management really does entail the creation of conditions for optimizing use of heritage and tourism. I think this is a, this is a common denominator for all of us here. So again, focusing on that is something that we all somehow do. So a change of focus, when it comes to tourist interpretation of heritage. So cultural heritage is not something that is important for its intrinsic value, but it is viewed as a tourist attraction. So uh, this, uh, this determination and implementation of strategy, this is not something that we have to do on our own, by ourselves. This is something that becomes really a responsibility of destination management. Okay, just a quick one, stakeholders, <coughs> you know, again, you all know that, who are stakeholders when it comes to, say, an archaeological site, a monument, or heritage site. So, of course, first and foremost, from our point of view, archaeologists, conservators, landowners, local community, local authorities, civil society, tourism sector, public and private as well. But when it comes to destination management, the main principal st stakeholders are First, public sector. So these are well, regional and lo lo local authorities to start with. Again, tourism sector, which can be both public and private. We'll talk about it later. Heritage sector, again, this is us. Private se sector, parts other than the tourism industry. Civil society, local community, and so on and so forth. So let's focus again on destination management, on tourism. So these are different levels of tourism management in Croatia. So first we have the, the national level. So this is a national tourist, tourist organization. And then you have regional management organization, which, as we shall see, are probably the key players in, in, in developing strategies and implementation of, of, of destination management. And then local destination management organizations as subordinated to regional management. Again, tourist info centers, which is a very, very uh, primary base, mostly concentrating on uh, information services and so on. So the National Tourist Organization, in case of Croatia, this is a Croatian Tourism Board. This is a, this is a strategic level. It does not really have a lot to do with uh, operational and implementation activities, but it's responsible for marketing tourism at national level and for determining the main strategic object objectives and goals of national tourism. So for instance, uh, if we take a step back in time, we would say that uh, a year ago, these are the people who decided to market Croatia as a country full of life. Come to Croatia, enjoy it, it's full of life. Brilliant. <laughs> a while ago, it was something that I liked much more. Uh, it was for, for a decade or so, we've advertised our tourism in our country. Thank you. I have to hurry up. As a Mediterranean as it once was, which was, well, far closer to the truth, truth if, if not entirely, entirely, um, entire, entirely true. But anyway, so this strategy, then we come to regional and local management organizations. These are the important guys. So these are the people who ultimately decide and will, with whom we will have to collaborate or battle to put forward the goals that we believe in. 
So this, they're in charge of managing and marketing tourism in a specific geographic region. So, say, Dalmatia, Istria, continental Croatia, and so on. Local management organizations also have a very important role, but they are mostly subordinated to regional, regional management organizations. Uh, again, I'll just uh, briefly, because there is not more time that I'm hoping for a discussion later, uh, I will introduce destination management company. There is a big difference between destination management organization and company, because management organization, destination management organization is actually something that comes from a public sector and incorporates <laughs> also private sector to a degree. Uh, so they are responsible, uh, responsible for a public good. Whereas this nation management company is basically a private enterprise that seeks and fosters its own goals. So the two obviously have to work together, but you know, these have their own particular goals, whereas the former ones have to really, really take care of all of us. Okay, so just briefly, uh, I would decided to, to just uh, briefly mention several several destinations. This is a destination that you all know about that has really branded itself over the years as a, as a really top class top class uh, destination with well problems of its own, but we can discuss it later. Again, Shibani, I wanted to introduce it uh, because this is uh, this is a place, this is a town in Croatia that uh, over the past few years has really. Uh, made it uh, very, uh, very, uh, very clear that uh, when public and private sector work together, very, very great goals can be achieved. Sorry. So later on, this is one of the fortresses that has been has been uh, <coughs> renovated. Stargard Plain again, a project that we're working on that uh, starts from 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 a base somehow and uh, and uh, really tries to well let's. Put it shortly, implement the operational gu guidelines from the from the uh, of the World Heritage Convention, and it's working quite fine. Unlike in Split, which is again a very important not only city but also destination and uh, and the uh, heritage well city town with a very important probably the most important heritage site in Croatia. But this is a very sad story, which I'm willing to discuss at any time. And I been doing so for a while. So this is, well, this is not the best practice thing, but I can, I can explain it later. Again, stakeholders you know, combating, combating all the time without any, any idea how to, how to come to terms for the common good. Again, from the point of view of destination management. And this is, this is where, sorry, Salona, you can see it at the call center and so on. So this is where Darkus should have taken over and it seems that I've been I've been <coughs> using using my time very extensively, so there's not much uh, thing to do now. But to say that Pula, keep in mind that Pula is a very very good good uh, example of how people from heritage sector can really work excellently with people from the public sector, from the tourism industry, because they first uh, taken taken. Uh, Taking some time to, to try to come into mind and then come to, to terms with, with the other sectors. And they have developed a destination together uh, in a very, in, in a way that we think it positive and we would like to, to see it implemented also in other sites and destinations in Croatia. So, what I'll do is, uh, since uh, my time, time has run out, I will just show you some photographs. About uh, okay, so this is the Pula Amphitheatre. So this is where a lot of money comes from because it has over three hundred thousand uh, annual visitors, and it really generates a lot of lot of income, which is then reinvest, reinvested into into care and, and promotion of, of that heritage. So okay, so this is <coughs> Darby would have would have talked about how a uh, museum has been put into charge of these different monuments that. Uh, combined uh, make up uh, a tourist uh, heritage tourism offer for the destination of Pula. And in this, he has said, he's really had, uh, the museum have really had uh, great help, assistance, and collaboration with the tourism sector, which is again something that you, know, I, you probably think that I'm stressing it too much, but uh, over, over a decade or so of collaboration with the tourism sector really makes me happy that I can finally point out uh, an example which really goes to show that things are possible and things can be done. So I'm just 
I will just uh, <coughs> end up by showing you a few other things. So this is what they organize. I'm sorry, uh, hockey. You know, everything is possible if you if you really plan it. They organized a hockey game, hockey match in uh, in the arena in the amphitheater. So this was a huge success, of course. And again, you need to think positive, out of the box, obviously. But not everyone can think of it, but it works. <laughs> again, well, this is something for the Guinness. Book of Guinness Book of Records. Again, some more well, heritage sites. Fortunately, no time for to, to explain that in detail. Some good planning, some galleries that are also in the responsibility of the museum. And actually, something that sorry, there's actually another archaeological site. Roman Pula project. So the museum is really taking people to the streets. To, 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 to live the heritage in a positive way because you know, we will not of course discuss authenticity here now but uh, uh, this is this goes as near to authenticity as possible so this is the end spectacular antique uh, myself and Dark as well have been advertising this for, for some time but this is a huge success the uh, reenactment of uh, gladiator games in inside the Roman amphitheater this is a huge success and it is done it is being done professionally and, and with respect to, to, to archaeology, to history, and to what well, gladiatorial games to start with. Okay, so this is the crowd in the, in the amphitheater. So these are the players, of course. Oh. <laughs> and then, should I leave it a bit more on? Okay. All right. Okay. Just to wrap it up, again, again, who are the people inside? So this is a, there is us. And it, the, the point was to, to, to say that uh, if we take an active role and believe, truly believe that we can do something, we really can. And Kula is one of the examples that has been. Okay, over and out. Thank you very much.